I, Kevin, I am so excited to talk to you. Do you remember our first interview 10 years ago? Or no, I'll remind you and it'll, you'll be like, what the fuck? So I met, you, I met you at the Atlantic label. You were in the studio and I was in the lobby. I was working for hot new hip hop at the time. I introduced myself and was like, Hey, Kevin, just wanted to introduce myself. I would love to do an interview with you one day. Um, if you could connect with, with your management or assistant and you're like, yeah, I'd love to do it. We shook hands. And then five minutes later, your assistant, I forgot his name at the time came out and was like, are you Jen? I said, yes. And he said, Kevin wants to know if you want to do the interview right now. So we did this impromptu interview in your studio. And oh, you said, I remember. Yeah, you said when you, I had on that when that baseball head. Yes. And you said that you did it because when you shook my hand, you knew you went off of energy and you knew I was a good person. So I was like, I I missed could the you, rolling. Could you how many how many years ago was that? Ten years ago, September 13, 2013. Could you say a little louder for the people in the back? September 13, 2013. It's crazy. Uh, I got, my staff. Yeah, I got my staff in here. That's all. Yeah, it was, but it was such an incredible interview. And so when Alvina reached out to me and I didn't see the email from Rolling, I was so sad because I was like, I want to talk to Kevin again. He's an incredible person. And so I really appreciate your time doing this. At least somebody okay. did. So thank yeah, you. Yeah. So. so thank you. So let's get right into it. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I want to first talk about the music you have recently released. You had two releases this month. And what I like to do is I like to pull the lyrics and ask a question about the lyrics. So it's still about the music, but it's about you as a person. So let's start with Pages. This was the second release of the month. And I love that you said, did a little brain, it's going to sound better when you do it, but did a little brainstorming, did a little soul searching, feel a little pain forming. What were, when you were writing and recording this record, what were the moments and the experiences that inspired it? I was writing in my diary. Okay. And um, I wrote that song around the time in uh, 2020. I don't know if you remember. I got to say this. Um, one time in 2020, when I disconnected my Instagram for like a yes. year and a half. I did. I did. And that was that was at a time when like I didn't want to live anymore. And I gotta say that because I'm a big advocate for combating depression. And that was just at a time that I was just like really suffering. Mm -hmm. And that came from like my diary. I keep like a journal. Okay. That's why it was pages. It was just from one of my inserts. I love that. What do you, you know? With your your diary, how often do you write in your diary? What's your routine when you do it? Is it whenever? Whenever, whenever I think about it, I just do yeah. it. I just, I just put a little something down, whatever just come out. Mm -hmm. the and then at that time, when you were talking about this was a time that you didn't want to live anymore. For anyone who is experiencing that right Everyone now. Everyone experiences this. Absolutely. So like if anybody sit here and say, I, I never had suicidal thoughts, you're lying. Absolutely. Like, let's be honest. Like, so pain what, is real. Everybody going through stuff. Everybody been through stuff. Everybody's hurting right now. But it's ways to combat depression, and that's one of my like my mission statements. Yes, and and I love that because that's it's. Can you talk about how important it is to to write as well? I try to tell people all the time, just at least write and get it out, and don't bottle it up, and you'll feel better. So, what got in you? It's, in it's one form of release. It's one form of release, but also um, yesterday when I was with my instructor and my instruction, excuse me, blah, 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 my instructor, um, she was teaching me some different hip mobility routines and I had a release. I had started crying in the gym and a lot of times, like a lot of our emotions are harbored in the hips. Mm -hmm. So I had an emotional detox. So that's just one way to release it's all kind of different ways to release absolutely and then i i like that yeah i did learn about that how it, whether it's in your hip or if it's a specific stress it could be in your kidneys so how good did that feel to be able to let that let that cry out when it was when you found out it was i always cry yeah three four yeah. times a day like if something just i just release I, i'm to the point where i'm outside of the fear of what somebody thinks about me i know who i am mm -hmm. I'm in love with me. I don't care who doesn't love me. I know who I am. When I tell people, you don't have to say it back, but I love you. That's just me operating out of the heart shop. 
Yeah. Um, and I love that you you have that at, at the end of most of your captions too on Instagram where it says, I love you also. It's just always if you can't if grateful. you can't love yourself, you can never truly love anybody else. You can't see yourself and other people because you don't love yourself. Now, if you hate yourself, you can see the things you don't like about yourself and other people. We are our reflections of each other. Mm -hmm. The world isn't, I tell people this all the time, the world isn't as it is, as we see it. And that's wow. just where I've been at. Like, I don't have no room to judge nobody. I don't have no room. I'm so busy uh, being addicted to self-improvement. You know, I'm a lifestyle curator, mm -hmm. you know, because anybody that come around me, they're going to get in tune with me. Absolutely. Well, and, and I provide intangible wealth. Like, anybody that ever came around me, their life became better because I'm a lifestyle curator. Anybody that come around me, you're going to get in tune with what I got going on. And it's all healthy. It's all beautiful things because I'm in the health and wellness. Yes. I love how, how... Not just not just physically. I'm talking about psychologically and emotionally. Yes. Health and wellness. What was the last thing that you learned about yourself? Because you talked about how you're, you know, you're always working on yourself. The last thing I learned? The last thing I enjoyed. The last thing you enjoyed? Um... You oh, no, know, the last thing you learned about yourself. Okay, the last thing I learned about myself, I can't say learned about myself, but the last thing I learned to have acceptance with, mm -hmm. I learned to start laughing at myself. Okay. So okay to make mistakes. What was the so last thing you laughed it's about? A, uh, I just finished laughing at myself in the earlier interview. I said something that was funny, and then I was like, oh, my God, Kevin, you're funny. And I just started <laughs> laughing when I said it. Because I, <laughs> And then I was like, I am screaming. But I was really talking to myself because I'm just like, it's okay to laugh at yourself. It is. It really is. Another. Like I, go, I go to the gym and just play around sometimes. I'm like, man, I'm about to go play around. Yes. There was, a, this was going to be a later part, one of my last questions, but because we brought up, you know, how funny you are, you know, on Instagram, <laughs> I love the video of your, your video with your daughter, Issa, where she's showing you karate for so many reasons, just because oh my of, God. I fucking love that video because it's like, just one, you can see the, the joy and the love and the admiration you have for your daughter as she's teaching you karate. You didn't hold back saying, you know, <laughs> you can't wait till she fucks up these hoes and you're going to go into school and pretend like you're mad at all the toys. But like, so in the caption, you talked about how your kids teach you so much. So what, what else have your kids taught you? And what are some of those lessons? And, you know, what's another thing you're proud of when it comes to your kids? The beautiful thing about my children is they operate off of experience. I can't tell them, you're not going to like it over there. They go off experience. And I was reading about creating new neural paths. And when you experience new things, whether you like it or not, just experiencing new things, you create new neural paths. Yeah. That's just where I've been there with. And then for neural paths, isn't that like the more the more you do it too, the more it becomes your normal as something else. Cause I feel like I ran into that. But if you're doing something yeah. all the time, it's going to become boring to you. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing something, if you're doing new things every day, you're doing something new. You're okay. doing it different outside of the standard way that you've been doing it. You're creating new neural paths. Yes. And then what's a lesson that you've instilled in your children, an important one that you want them to carry? Because I feel like you give them a lesson every day. I can see that. <laughs> the greatest one is fear now, respect all. Yeah, respect all. It's okay, mama. It's okay. It's okay. And then, um, okay, so yeah, I had to I had to bring up that video just because I probably she watched it. Like she bought for you, got run it over there. She, she gonna let me know. Oh, yeah. Oh, she don't play. That's big mom. I got a mini, I got a mini English bulldog like this big. She's like a year old. I oh, I need her. to see her. <laughs> don't get her right quick. What's her name? <laughs> her name, Yogi. Yogi does not sound like she plays because that sounded like a big, like, <laughs> No, Yogi, because she does yoga with me. Come here, mama. <laughs> mama. Bing. She does yoga with you. How yeah. often do you guys do yoga? Every day. Yogi. She's only a year old. 
Yeah, she smiles. She, this is a mini. She's not gonna get no bigger than me. Wow. What what made you pick the name? She do yoga. She she yoga. Madonna dog. That's my dog. She really does yoga. She does yoga. So you guys do yoga every day. Like when I'm stretching, she be stretching with me. <laughs> what else do you like to do with her? Everything. I take her walking. This is my baby. Well, she's really cute. She looks like, yeah, she's going to be part of the interview now. So shout out to her. So I wanted to pull a few more lines from pages. So you said, and once you change your perspective, that's when miracles happen. What was yeah. the perspective you needed to change that brought forth that miracle? And what was that miracle when you were working on this? The miracle is everything, to be honest with you. It's just once you change your perspective. I used to look at it. I used to look at it like when it rains. That's the worst time of the day, but it's not. It's the cleansing period. That's a okay. miracle. Without the rain, nothing could grow. Yep. Brent, I like sleeping in the rain at night when you can hear it. It's a reset. It's a cleansing. It is. Uh, my last line from Pages, and I'll move on to trying to forgive, was trauma. Well, it was longer, but traumatized by my heartbreak. And I think this is really important to talk about. Um, what it's advice? Good. Huh? Yeah. What advice do you What advice do you have for someone dealing with heartbreak? You know this is gonna sound crazy. Turn your pain into passion. Okay, that doesn't sound turn, crazy at all. Turn your pain into passion. Yeah. I let that heartbreak be the motivation for why I became the greatest version of myself. And guess what? Now that I'm elevated to this level, I accidentally discover things about myself I never knew existed. And now that I discover things that I never knew existed, I can look back at that situation and be grateful. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for forcing me to become something I never knew I could become. Thank you. Amazing. You're a great person. You're just not my person. That's a great one. I think yes, also no. men men don't speak much on heartbreak, and that's why I wanted to touch on this bar specifically. That's because men, men love realistically. Men love, men love realistic. Men don't love, men love, like, when I look at a woman, I automatically think about being married, having children. That's how men love. We love like that. And the reason men don't speak on heartbreak is because it hurts. It really hurts. Yeah. They have your heart broken. Yeah, it does. It, it hurts if somebody tell you that you, you put your all into a person and then they tell you, I, I got a better choice. Yeah, that would, you what? That would hurt a lot. A choice. So yeah. guess what? Now I'm about to take that pain. And I'm about to, I'm about to go to the gym and I'm gonna turn myself into something I never knew I could become. Mm -hmm. But I thank you for this motivation. Thank you. And it'll be a minute before I love again. But when I do, it's gonna be the right person. Yes, it it's is. Somebody that's in alignment with me. Yeah, and, and the person you were meant to be with. Don't chase it. It's coming. Yeah, exactly. And what? I used to I used to be like, man, it killed me when I see couples working out together. No, that's what I'm manifesting. So that's why I'm seeing a lot of that now. When I start seeing yeah. couples working in the gym everywhere I go, I see number of couples in the gym. I manifested this reality. So guess what? Yeah. I'm about to start seeing a lot of that and then mine is coming. Yep. That law of attraction and manifestation is real. I started you, to actually don't get jealous that. or upset when you start seeing it. Because that's just showing you what you about to have. Wow. That's, I would, yeah, I never thought of it from that perspective because same with me, I would see, eh, social media, you know, it's different. But yes, when you see those couples, you can feel that bitterness of, you know, why don't I have that? And then that's, so I love that perspective. So being single you know, is a blessing. It really is. I mean, that you hold. Yep. You complete. Yep. Exactly. You have to heal, you have to be whole. And that's, you you know, and sometimes it oh takes. Oh my God! Let me break. find out. Let me find out you're a lover. Uh, oh, I'm a huge lover. I'm a huge lover. <laughs> I can I'm tell. A huge, I'm a cancer. I'm emotional as fuck. I'm loving. I'm you know. I'm all of that. <laughs> but tell. for me, it's is that a good thing or bad? That's a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So for me, it's you know, I'm such a such a lover and very you know, if I'm with you, I am with you. I want to build with you. But my problem. Well, not my problem. A mistake I made was I wasn't completely healed or whole that I found myself in relationships in different patterns. I fuck with it. I yeah. fuck with it. Like, 
like I'm big on self accountability. Yeah. Yes. Like and I always look inwardly first. I'm big on that. Hey, I'm yeah. cool with you. Yeah. You did 10 years ago. I'm telling you, like you, I'll send you that interview. It was, I was like, I need to, I saw you at Rolling Lab oh, and I was going to you. stop you, but I was like, I'm not about to stop him and just like run up on him and be like, I was like, this is like, you don't really meet people that, that exhibit that self accountability. Yeah. No, you like, need that. Like I, man, my relationship and my love, like I, instead, you can't blame other people, even if they had hurt you, cheat, whatever they did, because you're the common denominator in that relationship. So I had to step back and was like, all right, I don't want to go through, you know, the same things. And I know that's, that's on me to become, you know, whole and healed. And like you said, heartbreak and all that makes you find who you are. And it's, yes. terrible. It's, I wanted to ask, so like with heartbreak, what do you think women should understand about men when it comes to heartbreak? Because, you know, it's different. I can't, I can't speak for all men. I can speak yeah. for myself. Okay. As a man, I was always taught that you're not supposed to show emotion. You're supposed to be tough. You're never supposed to cry. You're never supposed to none of this. And I had a huge awakening when I went back and sat with my chiefs. And they was like, you know, that way that you operating, that's not, that's not reality. That's not real. The way that you operate, you operating out of ego. Yeah. I was like, and I cried because when I sat with these chiefs, they taught me things about life that I never really looked at as far as like the holy divine feminine energy, your masculinity being sacred and not toxic. And it takes balance. You know, it, it, it takes a man and a woman. You have to balance. You can't compete with each other. Like when I hit an alpha male, alpha female, it's all bullshit to me. It is. It, it takes balance. Like, you're not supposed to be competing with each other. We're supposed to work together. Like, your strengths are my weaknesses. And my strengths are your weaknesses. But together, we unstoppable. Yes. it's You're supposed to be building together, but you can't build. It can't be one-sided. And that's, that's just how I look at it. Yeah. But, you know, anybody that done been hurt, it's easy to throw the label like, oh, all these kind of people are, are effed up or all these kind of people are effed up because you're speaking from a place of hurt. Yep. And the ego is really only there to protect you. So you try to stay away from what it was that hurt you. Yeah. And it's not yeah. like that. It's yeah, like, not all people I, are like that. It's yeah, not even possible. <laughs> Yeah, when I forgive somebody, I'm not I'm forgiven just to release that trauma and I go mm -hmm. back and add gratitude to the emotion. Yeah. Like that's what they taught me to do. Go back and, and have the conversation with the person, even if they're not in front of you, just have the conversation with them. Openly, yeah. verbally speak and be like, I appreciate you for doing this and doing this. And I yeah. release you with love for my energy field. And yeah. I went through that and I didn't know that that really works, but yeah. it does. Have you tried to um, purge letters? I don't do that. As I much. tried it because when I went to therapy, she was like, you need to do a purge letter. And like, but my, I didn't burn it or like throw it in water after, but it actually did help where it was you like, oh, wow. Yeah. I was like, I'm a, I'm a big communicator, but I was like, there was still some parts where I'm like, okay, this needs to be well, really. That was, my, that was my biggest problem. I wasn't a communicator. I feel like everybody just needed to know. You supposed to know. <laughs> I was operating out of ego. What helped you to was it after talking to your chiefs or what helped you to become a better communicator? Talking to my chiefs and also my children. Yep. Talking to my children. Also, yeah. Like I had to communicate with them to allow them to know like how I felt. And I just didn't want to pass on any traumatic, past traumatic experience on to my children. Mm-hmm. That's what made me really start my healing journey. I didn't want my children to suffer because I was suffering. Yes. I is. just, I didn't, I didn't want it. Yeah. And I, so I have one more from pages, even though we started to talk about forgiveness for trying to forgive. Yes, they were, so, it feels good. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my last one for pages got love for my old friends. And they all started changing. Difficult to keep up. We on different pages. What page does one need to be on to be friends with Kevin Gates? It's not about what page you're on. It's about our energy being in alignment energetically. Okay. Because you could be around somebody that's vibrating on a higher frequency and they'll raise your frequency. You could be around somebody that's vibrating on a higher frequency and they'll repel you. 
-hmm. because you 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 know a low frequency and a high frequency can't be around each other. They're needed because they contrast each other, but yeah, they can't yeah. be around each other. They repel each other. Yeah. Like if you, like I notice, like if I go in a room where everybody drinking, I'm like, I'm okay. I don't drink. You don't drink. I don't drink either anymore. Like I just when I started my healing journey, I'm like, I can't. Like so. I, I have fun with myself, so yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. I'm such a homebody and all that for I've been working on my heart and been trying to forgive. So you talked about forgiveness. So what how are you working on your forgiveness and why do you think it's hard for people to forgive sometimes? Who, like. Who want to forgive? Like, that's one of the hardest things it is to do. Who want to forgive somebody that hurt them? I had to put it in a different perspective. Like when I forgive, I'm releasing that person from my energy field. I'm releasing that traumatic experience. I'm releasing all of that from my energy field. Hey, right, with all due respect, you look good as fuck. Yeah, you. Just said it. I'm proud of you. Well, I love that. When, I, when I'm releasing somebody from my energy field, I'm re I'm releasing them. I'm releasing that past traumatic experience because I have the tendency to keep reliving things and reliving things and reliving things. And then you get stuck in that cycle. Yeah. And it's like your body become addicted to stress yeah. as opposed to truly being peaceful. Yes. So we overstimulate ourselves with stress and past traumatic experience and keep reliving depression. Like I'm combating depression. Yeah. We all are. I think we all are. Like Kevin, thank you so much for taking the time. I'm sorry again for being, if keeping you waiting earlier. I really enjoyed this interview. Man, let me tell you something. I don't judge. 